So you make the Forbes list. Mm-hmm. How does that change anything for you? Oh my goodness, changed my life. What's going on, family? David Shans, I want to give you a special invitation to The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com. It is the only organization that gathers every single morning, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, And we help you learn entrepreneurship, grow as an entrepreneur, become an entrepreneur, or you just get to be in an environment, a network of all entrepreneurs. Literally hundreds of entrepreneurs gather on a Zoom call every single morning, Monday through Friday, okay? So I want to give you a special invitation to help grow your business and your brand all this year, okay? Every single day. You eat every day for the for your health. You brush your teeth every every day for your hygiene. I need you to learn and grow every single day um, for your mindset, okay? So make sure you go to themorningmeetup.com. It is only $1 um, trial. You don't need a promo code. Just go one dollar the morning meetup.com check it out if you like us stay if not after that it's 79 dollars a month but i'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy yourself okay so go to the morning meetup.com i love y'all see you in the morning the social food podcast streaming now streaming on now. all platforms all platforms <laughs> so welcome to the uh, social proof podcast <laughs> where we find dope people and um they have receipts, like they've actually built something. And the idea is to be able to teach other people how to do it. So um, you are our esteemed guest today. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, David. Hello, Donnie. Hello. I am Danielle D. Hughes. You got to say the D. It's like Wheezy F. Baby. So okay. it's like you got to say the D. Why? Did you get that from Wheezy? I didn't. But actually, when I was like first getting out there, I wanted to become like this world-renowned speaker. And my name wouldn't come up in a Google search. So Danielle Hughes, there's like also a pilot named Danielle Hughes. Mm. So that was coming up. So I said, okay, you got it. I got to be Danielle D. Hughes. Gotcha. So that's where it That comes makes from. sense. I like that. I like that. Okay, go ahead. And all it's of a, the branding, Danielle D. Hughes. D. Hughes. So I'm a two-time Forbes lister. So I made the Forbes under 30 list twice. Really? Um, the under 30 list once in 2018, the 2018 Forbes under 30 list. And this past year on the All-Star alumni list. So the alumni who are like doing big things, making changes in their respective cities throughout the world, I make that list. So Ow. two times. Ow. How do you do that? How do you get on it? Okay, you know so it? Um, it's very strange. I'm not going to say it's strange because I'm a manifester mm-hmm. and I believe that vision is everything. So I started making like very specific and intentional vision boards in 2015. That's the first time I made one. I'm like, the magazines aren't working for me because this isn't my vision. So yeah. I can cut out a minivan and say I want a new car, but I don't want this car. Yeah, yeah. So Pull I started getting bit. on Pull Google. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I got on Google and I'm like, what do I want to do? So I went to Georgia State. I'm current. I'm from Detroit. I'm a native Detroiter. Went to Georgia State. Um, my degree was in journalism. My background is in journalism. Mm-hmm. Since I was 16, I wanted to be a news anchor. That was the only dream I ever had. Mm. So I move here, go to Georgia State. I intern at WSB. Shout out to WSB. It's the number one news station here. Okay. Um, and I moved back home because I couldn't find a job. I applied to literally <laughs> 70 news stations. So I'm at home. I'm depressed. I'm back in my room with the little Bow Wow posters and the B2K posters. <laughs> and I'm like, um, hey, yeah, right now, something's so got to shake because yeah. this isn't working. So my friends are like, let's make vision boards. I was like, vision boards don't work for me. But y'all can come over here, but mm. they don't work for me. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I just want to make myself proud. I want to prove to myself that I can make something happen. So mm-hmm. I get on Google and I start typing up everything that I want to see. I put three Forbes list covers on my vision board. I'm like, I'm going to be on the Forbes list. This really? is really. Did you know what you were going to be on the Forbes list for? Nothing. I had That's no the beauty clue. about manifestation. You don't really know all the time what it's going to be for. Mm. You just know yeah. it's going to happen. Mm, knew I like it was going to happen. I like that. Also, I did not learn how to drive until I was 23. I did not get a license, what? get behind the wheel until I was 23. A friend of mine that I grew up with in church died in a car accident when I was 16. I said, I'll never drive. Mm. Just something could have happened with me being a passenger, walking down the street. Mm-hmm. But I said, I will never get behind the wheel of a car. I'm never going to learn how to drive. Wow. So I put on that vision board, that I, the car that I wanted. Um, didn't have a license, didn't know how to drive. Um, I said I wanted to be on the Forbes list. Uh, I said that I wanted to travel to Dubai, to Paris. I'm a b- very broke college student. I didn't know how this was going to happen. All of it ended up happening. Um, that was August, October 2015 I made that board. January, no, I'm sorry, that was October 2014. Mm-hmm. January 2015, well, my mom drove that car off the lot because I still didn't have a license. <laughs> but I got really? that exact car that I put on that vision board and I still have it. So wow. just be very specific and intentional. Wow. And I can say that's what led me there. It's like one thing led to another. 
and I was on the Forbes list. But how, no, you didn't drive off the lot. And then, yeah, you know what? You just visualize the car. <laughs> get on this Forbes list. Let's do I the need Forbes to Forbes list next. Forbes list is so, next. Right, you bought a car. What is you to achieve some things. Yes. I did. Yeah, so let yeah, me yeah. backtrack a little bit. Mm-hmm. So at Georgia State, and I love telling this story because I was broke. Like, I don't know. Can I curse on here? No. Okay. So I was very broke. Like, mm-hmm. broke as very broke. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So I literally, <laughs> Forbes had this, like, thing going on where you can get three free issues by entering a new email address. So mm-hmm. I would create new email addresses just so I could get those free issues because I didn't even have the money to pay for a subscription. Mm. So that's how bad it was here. Um, as a, a college student, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. Um, so I start, make a long story short, I get hired as a news anchor at 23 in Dothan, Alabama. Not sure if y'all ever heard I of that. I know Dothan. Yeah. Very well. I was in Dothan. Okay, so I gotcha. So I'm in Dothan. I get fired from that job in five months. I'm in the station car. You know, it's like wrapped with mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. everything on it. I get into a fender bender, literally tap the back of this person's car. This was on a Tuesday. My boss How calls me into 23. Oh, so you just got your car? Yep. I just got my car. How old but are you I'm now? in the station car. Now I'm 29. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Just so turned this is 29. six years ago. This is six gotcha. years ago. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm in the, the station car. First of all, if you're in a wrapped vehicle, you can't be throwing up gang signs, can't be acting a fool. It's, it's easy to forget. Mm. But that was me in the station car. Anyway, I tapped the back Did of this person's car. gang signs at a... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's in me. It's in me. Um, Don't let the smooth taste fool you. I'm getting a whole lot that I didn't know about here. (laughs) There's a lot going on. So I'm in the car um, and I tap the back of this person's car. Mind you, this is like my first time being in. I just got a license. I, Mm. I barely knew what I was doing. I literally tapped the back of this person's car. They get out and they're just like, yeah, I don't have any insurance. My boyfriend is driving. He doesn't have a license. So we're not going to tell the police about this. So I'm like, bet. <laughs> Done. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Works for me. Um, so someone sent a picture of us, a viewer, from the side of the road, like took, snapped a photo of us and sent it to my news section, sent it wow. to our general manager. So I come back from work and my boss, I come back to the office and my boss is like, how was your day? I'm like, great. <laughs> Are you asking? <laughs> He's like, are you sure there's nothing you want to tell me? I said, no, there's nothing I want to tell you. He's, so he pulls up the picture like, there's nothing you want to tell me? I'm like, I'm caught. So mm. they basically told me I was too much of a liability. They could have lost all of the insurance on all of the cars for me still being an employee. So they're like, we got to let you go. Dang. So they wow. let me go. So mentors are so important. I'm going to throw that in there because mm. my mentor, the great Blaine Alexander, um, I called her. I was like, hey, I just got fired. She was like, bet, come to Atlanta tonight and meet me. Go to Atlanta. She was working at 11 Alive. She was like, I made a couple of phone calls. I got you an interview. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Got me an interview at a station in Augusta. So I moved to Augusta. Um, I was an anchor. I'm 23 on the anchor desk. Mm-hmm. It's like, how did this happen? I just got fired last week. Um, and I got ended up getting let go from that job in a mm-hmm. year because they said they were just looking to go in a different direction. They ended up replacing me with someone who was significantly older than I was. So, you know, maybe hey. it was a, an age thing. I don't know. My co-host was 37. So she was like my senior so that's gracious yeah. and then you end up on the Forbes list end up on the Forbes list I need list. to know how you got there how did I get on the Forbes <laughs> list I had to I moved back home right. I'm telling my mom like I'll never go back to Detroit I'm like I'll over my dead body I'm going back to Detroit I'm never going back um, number one I feel like I'm a failure my family has seen like oh my gosh she moved and she made this happen for herself even though I was making peanuts but it was just the illusion of it all mm-hmm. like she's really doing something well so I'm like I'm never moving back to Detroit my mom's like okay we're talking, my lease is up in three days. She was like, so where are you going to go? I said, not back to Detroit. I'm right. just going to figure it out. Two days, my my lease is up. I have nowhere to go. I'm like, mom, I'm moving back to Detroit. Like, I have to come home. But it's only going to be for like a month. So no one get excited. I'm, I'm not staying. She's mm-hmm. like, okay. End up staying. A friend of mine from high school, um, I was telling her just how much, how integral my mentor was to me in mm-hmm. those times, like the last two years, because I had a lot going on. I'm like, I want to offer this to the city that raised us. Like Detroit made us. Mm-hmm. I want to give back to the city in some way. So we created a nonprofit. I will not speak on that nonprofit because I no longer work with that partner, but we created a nonprofit. It was amazing for the mm. time being. Um, we decided to do a one day like mentorship meetup where we would have a bunch of kids in the city. We have DJs, we'll have freebies. We'll just split them up. Whatever you see yourself doing in the next five to 10 years. Do you want to do music? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you want to become an engineer? We literally had someone in each career field and we had a bunch of DPS students, Detroit public school students. 
and they could meet a mentor. Mm. So we garnered a lot of attention from, attention from that. And she's like, you know what? I think that this is bigger than a one day event. This needs to be an organization. Right. So we launched it into an organization. Um, Forbes found me from, first of all, I'm very intentional about hosting. Social media is played a huge role in me making the Forbes list. Um, they found me from there, like literally. Let me just, ask you, what is the, so the Forbes list, mm-hmm. is it people, oh, so the Forbes 30 under 30, it's like influential people. Under, under 30. 30. Gotcha, yep. okay. You got to slow things down and for Shams. I'm just, <laughs> it's, for, it's for the audience, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. So um, so you build this nonprofit. Yep, build okay? a nonprofit. And what was the impact? So it, we were all about impact, community, and scholarship. Mm-hmm. So it was impacting young people to literally help them find. We were working with low-income students. Like, yeah. these students don't have access, opportunity, to any of the things that we have been exposed to. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we have to bring this back home. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what it was about, just literally taking kids to the next level. Like, who can I connect you to that can help change your life? Yeah. That was all that it was about. So mentorship played a huge role in what we were doing. We did, um, we have a a, a scholarship um, that we gave out to kids. We did monthly meetups, matched them with mentors. We did um, hygiene sessions, just like, it was literally... The big brother and big sister of Detroit yeah. without being called that. Gotcha. Um, and we impacted so many students. Dope. It was a beautiful thing. So, that Donnie, are, are you going to ask what happened between her and her partner or are we going to leave it alone? Because I really want to know. <laughs> so, great. Yeah, I make happened? the Forbes list. She doesn't make the Forbes list. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh. So, we passed several. And, and I'm going to let everybody figure that out because she and I, we it was a, a big thing. And yeah. I'd rather not speak on that. Um, Did y'all ever amend? Y'all ever get back together? Cool or no? Dang. Dang. Do you miss yeah. her? I can feel. I can. I can feel why she would feel away. Though. Especially you like make, if, yeah. if Yo, we start something together. If you make the Forbes list and you don't bring me with you. I mean, you talking about me personally? Yes. And a lot of my fellow <laughs> under thirties, <laughs> we threat. actually took that it's to Forbes because a lot of my fellow under thirties were like, "This broke up my partnership mm. Man. because I made it and they did not." So there were several people who experienced that. Several different people. Once I shared my story with someone, they're like, oh, the same thing happened to me. And someone else was like, same thing happened to me. Dang. So we brought that to them like, look, if there's a, a, a pair or there's a trio, if there are co-founders, you have to include all of the co-founders. It cannot be one person. Dang, mm. that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. And some other things, you know, contributed to that. But a big part of it is we talked about it and she was like, I feel some type of way. I'm just mm. as much, you know, I'm make up as involved yeah i'm just as involved as you are and i'm not getting any credit for it because after that they see me on the forbes list i'm getting all the awards i'm literally in magazine articles that no one ever reached out to me about they're like hey i wrote a book a write-up on you i'm just like wait i didn't approve this i don't so she's saying this like are you going behind my back what is happening and it just ah friend ex-friend we're sorry yeah it's never intentional It's, it's never it's never intentional but sometimes like you have to go with the wave. I'm a little bit different. So if they want Shans on the on the on the Forbes list, Shans just mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> it was a win for both name. of us. I've grown a lot since then. This is absolutely no shade to her. Yeah, um, I think if you that we worked something together well from the beginning, together. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've learned a lot since then. I think a lot could have been communicated differently on mm. my end because I'm just like, I don't understand. Wait, what are you talking about? Mm. Um, I'm sure if we ever meet up again, we would both say, girl, we could have done that Talked differently. About this differently. Um, yeah. But yeah. Send her a DM. Send her a DM. I've thought about We're gonna it. We're going to follow up with this story, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that'd be cool. Let's send her a DM. Yeah, hey, friend, understand. if you're watching. <laughs> it's all love. So, so you make the Forbes list. Mm-hmm. How does that change anything for you? Oh my goodness, changed my life. So, and another thing that I really want to drive home that I always tell my students, any of my mentees, everything that glitters is not gold. So I made the Forbes list November, 2017. I got my car repossessed July, 2017. Cause I wasn't making any money, but mm. I, I had, I've won every award right. in Metro Detroit or any of those. <laughs> I've been on every under 30, Accolades under 40, under income. 20, what, whatever, 20 yeah. in their twenties. Um, but I had no money. Mm. I had no money. It was not until the last couple of years. It's 2021. Wow. In early 2019 that I actually started seeing real money. So wow. from um, what? But, Where did we start seeing the money from? So I started um, Detroit Public Schools from seeing me on the Forbes list. They're like, we got to have you in our school system. I'm like, okay, if you want me, you got to cut the check. Mm-hmm. So that's where it came from. 
That's a benefit, um, Anya, being it, like having the highlights and, you know, because it, yeah. And I think that's the thing because you'll get, like, if you have, if you're on like the magazine and, you know, you, you built a brand based mm-hmm. off that platform, then some people just don't know how to leverage it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're broke while you have, while you're on the mm-hmm. If you know how to leverage that thing. Ooh, that's a word. We can't just skip over that. Yeah. Knowing how to leverage a platform, an opportunity, a publication. Uh, because there are a lot we know. Mm. I, sometimes I see those write-ups, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know behind the scenes that sometimes it's not, because your story may be impactful and may make a publication for a moment because of whatever it was that you were doing, not mm-hmm. necessarily attached to an income status, right? And those things are, are incredible. But it can change your life if you know how to leverage it. Mm -hmm. Notice when Danielle introduced herself and she prefers to be called Danny, right? Notice when Danny introduced herself, she's like, I'm Danny Hughes and I made Forbes list twice. Danielle D. Danielle D. And I was featured in Forbes twice, right? You start off with that because from a viewership perspective, oh, Forbes, Forbes, let me listen further to Mm -hmm. what this woman has to say. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I gotta get something off my chest. (laughs) I'm sorry. I really have to get something off my chest. And we're not judging me, right? No. I, I don't know. Judgment free zone. You don't I know. Might. You're not sure yet. <laughs> I don't know what I say. <laughs> so <laughs> my, I want to I wanna get like verified on Instagram, right? Okay. For a blue check. <laughs> <laughs> did the so Forbes did, article get you verified? It did not. Damn. I've actually applied like three different times. Yeah, I applied a couple times. But I... I paid this guy to uh, to, to do the, <laughs> the write up in the articles and because my friend said, "Yo, you gotta you get these articles and write ups, and that's how they verify you." So mm-hmm. I just want I want y'all to know I feel like a fraud right now, but it was a part of the strategy. And so he's like, "Yo, you're gonna be on Yahoo, you're gonna be on Fox," but when they it's not like Yahoo, it's like or it's not like Fox, it's like mm-hmm. the subsidiary it's like of five, Fox. Yeah, two, three, four, six. <laughs> I got that same email actually, so I yeah, I, I so they got me. About. They got you. How much did you pay? It was fifteen hundred for like a. It was, I think it was seven fifty for four articles or no, for like six articles or something like that. So I did it twice. I just gave them up front, like okay, do two different stories. I don't remember mm-hmm. you ever sharing any of these publications that you were featured in. This is my transparent moment. <laughs> Okay. I'm being transparent, Dottie. Okay. Well, you know, I, let's let's. Be, I don't want to. I don't want to slide over that so easily. So no, we can slide over it. Did you share do you think the I'm articles? A fraud? I do not think you're a fraud. No. Okay. Good. Ooh. Not at all. Well, yeah. no, because publicists. That's that's what people pay publicists to get featured in articles, in yeah. publications, and media, and things like that. So it's definitely not fraudulent. I don't know. Did that activity get you verified? No. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> no, okay. not at all. <laughs> I just wanted to, like, you earned it. Yeah, you I paid it. for it. Okay, he so. paid for it. <laughs> not the same, though, Shans. It's not the same. <laughs> Yo, oh my gosh, I be seeing so many people. Y'all are featured at Yahoo, and I'm looking like, no, I know you went to the same guy I went to. You went to the same guy. <laughs> and now I don't want because I have somebody in my DMs who legitimately wants to write an article, and now I just don't want to do it because people are going to think I pay for it. I'm not paying for it. No, if you I'm didn't pay for, for it, it, do it. Here's I'm the thing. not paying for it. I'll do it again. You'll pay for it I again? I wouldn't pay for it again, no. Oh, yeah. absolutely. No. Well, I'd pay to be in Forbes or Entrepreneur for sure. Magazine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Pay to be in those publications. Hold on. No, I won't. Stay on my DMs because they about to go. Right. <laughs> Stay right. My, no, I'm not paying. Forget it. Okay, so back to getting to this bag. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, so in to both of your points, um, I hired a publicist. As soon as I made the Forbes list, the day I made the Forbes list, my it's friend up. is a publicist. Mm. I was like, we got to... We got to maximize this. We got to monetize this, make some money off of it. So my favorite Kanye, old Kanye verse, is don't leave when you're hot. That's how May screwed up. So when you're hot, when it's your moment, you have to capitalize on that. You got to go. You in. have to go in because that's your moment. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to her. I was like, yeah. So I just made the Forbes list. I sent her the article. She's like, let's get busy. I'm sending you a contract today. So it, it just blew up from there. From mm. there, um, I just met more and more people and it led to new opportunities. Um, so I'm no longer working with the school system, but while I was working in the school system, it led me into my next venture. Now, let me backtrack a little what bit. What were you so, doing in the school system though? So I was a dream director. So what I was is a what? really cool, fancy title. I was basically a life coach to the kids. What? Yeah. How come we didn't know about a position called dream director? I don't know. Hold on. How many hours a day did you have to work? I worked like four hours a day. Oh. 
Hmm. Maybe three days a week. Three, four days a week. That's pretty dope. That's dope. Yeah. But it was so much outside of that. I I'm a very that. hands-on mentor. Mm -hmm. So it was weekend work. It was nights. It so was, you were working a lot. I was working a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. When okay. you're committed to the cause, you know, it just it just Absolutely. calls you. Absolutely. But when did you get babies. uncommitted to the cause? <laughs> <laughs> because so, I no longer say, work uh, in the school system. Um, the money dried up. So right. I was like, uh, okay, I, I still have bills to pay. Yeah. So um, I'm at home with my parents saving for my dream home. Um, my parents are like, no, you don't have to leave, especially my dad. And, and we'll talk about my dad too. But he's like, no, you don't have to leave. Like you can stay forever. I'm like, no, I've got to go. I've got to spread my mm -hmm. wings. Um, so my mom gets laid off from her job. And I'm thinking like, how can I make some passive income for my mom? Um, my sister was dating someone at the time. His mom had vending machines. I'm like, bet, can I pay you for a consultation? She was like, no, like we can just link mm -hmm. up. Like we can talk. So I'm like, cool. She's telling me like how much she paid for her vending machines. And she's like, I took money out of my 401k. And I'm just like, oh. You took money out of your 401k. I don't know anything about this business, right. so I'm just trying to learn. She's telling me oh, how she much. Oh, she took money out of her 401k to invest in the vending machines. To invest in the vending machines. And, and how many said, did she have at that time? Do you know? She had four. Mm. Four brand new vending machines. They were like through a, a franchise. Mm. She's telling me how much she's making, how much, no, how much she's spending. She has not made a return yet. And it had been like six months, seven months, something like that. And I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah. Um, so I do my due diligence and I tell all of my mentees, you have to do your due diligence. I can lead you to the water, but you have to do the work. Yeah. This is your experience. Sure. This is your business. So that's what I did. I reached out to other people. I got consultations from a couple other people who have been to machines, mm -hmm. found them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, let me get everyone's different perspective. And then I'm gonna put my little spin on it. So it took me literally 26, 27 days to get my business started. Mm. Wow. Um, I, am I like giving all the sauce now? Yes, all of okay. it. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm giving all the sauce. Yeah, we're giving the sauce. I purchased my first machine for five hundred and fifty dollars. I teach people how to start vending machine businesses with less than a thousand dollars because I've done it. How much did the lady pay for hers? The, the I want to say for the four of her machines, maybe she spent like six thousand dollars. Mm. Mm. Hers all okay. of it, and that was just machines. Yeah. Oh, wow. Four machines, she spent like six thousand. So wow. five fifty. You spent five fifty on yours. Five fifty, and to this day, that is my best machine. I have not had any issues out of it. So when I hear people say you can't buy a machine for that cheap, it's gonna conk out on you. <laughs> I've done it. So mm, where is it at? So it's in Detroit. It well, duh, I live in Detroit, um, but it's an architectural firm in Detroit. Mm. So what was that pitch when you walked up like, y'all got this fitting machine? Y'all need snacks? Yes. So actually, um, I just went out on a limb. Um, my aunt knew someone who worked at the building. So mm -hmm. she was like, they're looking for vending machines. I'm like, my niece has a vending machine business. I'm like, okay, here's my shot. I always tell my mentees, you have to walk in like you own the place. I had one machine. That was it. <laughs> mm. I, I did not know this walked business. Walked in like right, an right, right. I walked in and I offered them a copy of my book. So I'm also an author. So I'm like, right. hey, I'm an author. I'm a Forbes lister. This is my vending business. We're going to use that Forbes list. I'm going to start using Yahoo. I'm a Yahoo lister. You know what I mean? I've been on Yahoo featured it, it works, works. and it's so funny. It's like, because I sometimes I forget about it. And people are like, wait, you're on the Forbes list? Like, you just walked in here? Like, you just, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I forget. But I keep it in my back pocket. Yeah. So I walk in. I'm like, I have my book. I have my pitch. I, I printed it out for them. Nothing fancy. It was like Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I'd love to move forward with this business. This will absolutely make your business look more attractive. Having these mm -hmm. vending machines in here, it's convenient. You always want to speak in so, little gems that I only offer to VIP clients. Okay. okay. Um, you also, you always want to make sure that you are selling the convenience and not the machine. Mm. These businesses don't care about just having a vending machine in their business. Tell me how it's convenient. Mm -hmm. I'm all about convenience. I'll spend whatever on convenience. Yeah. So tell me why this is convenient for me. You want to sell the benefits. So I made my pitch all about how convenient it was, the mm. benefits to having vending machines in your business. They were like, bet, when, when do we sign up? How can I get this machine in here? Mm. He said, well, we want two machines. So how long will it take? So another gem, I drop a couple, <laughs> sprinkle a little on y'all. Sprinkle a little, razzle tassel. A little bit. Um, you always want to give yourself four to six weeks because that'll give you wiggle room. So if you have zero machines, because I had one machine, but I told them that I had two. Because I'm like, yeah, we're ready to move in. Still in this but deal. it's going to take four to six weeks. I did not have another machine. But right. that gave me some time to find a machine. Mm. Right. And within six weeks, we had it moved into that location. Nice. So Where'd you get it from? I always want to make sure. I bought it from Craigslist. Mm. Mm. Yep. Both of them? Both, both of the machines? Both of them from Craigslist. Okay. So I found the seller that I still work with to this day. It's been like a year and a half. I love him. Now I just call mm. him like, yo, I need a machine. He like, what kind? I got it done for you. He specializes in refurbished machines. So mm. all I work with is used machines. Okay. Mm. So my most expensive machine has been fifteen hundred dollars. Mm. Oh wow! And so like somebody could li somebody watching this who's looking for 
an opportunity because honestly, before you and I ever met, I think mm -hmm. I shared with you, I was looking for something that my daughter could do in college that wouldn't take her away from her studies, but would bring in a source of income. And I'm like, mm -hmm. vending machines sounds like the move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can really build this thing out and make a whole like serious business, you mm -hmm. know, of it. But so someone right now, who, who's perfect for this kind of business? College students. Mm -hmm. Anyone really looking to bring in an extra income without going to get a job? Because where else can you spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes and make $200? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So on the low end, if you have... And I what do you mean by that? 30, too, 40 minutes to make $200? What do you mean? Servicing a machine, it'll literally take you 30, 40 minutes of your time a Ooh. week. To refill it. To refill it. Okay. Let's say that you are only making $200 a week from your location. And that's a standard location. And I, I don't want to say standard because a lot of different things make that up. Foot traffic, location. Foot traffic is very important. Um, I, I always tell my clients, don't go into a location that has less than 40 people coming in and out per day. 40 don't people in and out per 40. day. You want to make it. sure that you are doing above 40. Okay. Now, you see the big money when you in the, you got 150 people coming in and out per day, 200, 300. That's like a TJ Maxx shopping center. Yep. Well, I, I have a gym more location now. Mm -hmm. Gyms. Yep. And they have, we're shut down in Detroit right now due to COVID. Mm. Um, but we, they have 300 clients coming in and out per day. So they have very large clientele. Mm. So, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you always want to keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, for so sure. we, are we on a vending machine oh, now? Let's get a vending let's machine. Let's get a couple of vending machines It's now. low startup costs. Um, and I have not checked this in a few weeks, but the last time that I checked, the average net worth of a single black woman between 25 and 35, I think it was, I could be a little off in this, was $5. Hmm? What? That was the net worth of the average black woman, 25 to 35, was $5. What? Yes. The average net worth. So... My what mission was that? goes beyond, and I'll have to look it up, and I can I share get it, it with though, you. Because yeah. I was looking up um, net worth, and it's the amount of money that you have in terms of assets mm -hmm. minus, minus your, your debts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or so if you if you have, you know, I don't know, $1,000 in the bank, but your car is, you know, you owe $25,000, you are literally negative, negative 24000 yeah, yeah, So yeah. the average, I see that five bucks dang yeah. that's crazy so my passion for working with my students that I was working with has definitely led to working with number one black people I'm an advocate for black people um and men and women who are really looking to just have a vending machines at low startup costs it's an income producing asset that is not going to break the bank mm-hmm but you can absolutely pass it down to your kids. It can be the family business. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's what fuels me. So your goal is two hundred a week. Yep, at least two hundred from from a. So that's a gross machine. eight hundred a month. How much are like so like like fifty seventy five cents at a time? Yep. Right. You yep. get some snacks. The most expensive chips, thing. Like well, my gym machines are a little different. The most expensive thing in just my like snack and beverage machines. All of my beverages are a dollar fifty. Um, in my snack machines, the most expensive item is a dollar fifty. Also, what about the cheapest? The cheapest is fifty cents. You sell like gum and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. But then when you go into like gyms, these are more nutritious products, so they're more expensive. They cost more. Yeah. And so the most expensive thing in my gym machine, um, the snack machine, is two twenty five. Mm -hmm. It's a kind bar. So talk to me about the talk to me about the the worst machine that you have. Like, what's the one that, like, Gosh. it just can't get right? Okay, so I have an older machine that is placed in a nursing home. So let me say, really quickly, because we are in a COVID era, we are currently in a global pandemic, you want to look for essential locations. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. machines were shut down from March to July. Mm. I had to pivot very quickly. Mm. I had to put out digital products very quickly because that's yeah. the only way, not the only way I was making money. You need to have your hands in a couple right, other things. Right. Yeah. But from my vending business, that's the only way that I was making money. I had the ebook on the back burner because people were asking me. I literally did not have the bandwidth to work with everyone mm. who wanted to work with me. Mm. Consultations were booked for the year. I'm like, what else can I do? Create an ebook. My ebook is so much value in it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in giving value. You got to give yeah. value. That's yeah. the only way that you really get anything out of life is giving value. Um, so I come out with the ebook. Ebook does well, but I'm not making any money for four months from these vending machines. Mm. Once things started to open, especially in Detroit where I am, I was like, I'm only getting essential locations. Mm. Um, so another thing I want to pivot really quickly is talk about vending routes. So you okay. can purchase machines that are already in locations. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I did. I get on Facebook Marketplace, type in vending machines in my area. I already had like my location where I was looking for things at. This uh, nursing home is literally three minutes from my house. So you just bought one that was in there already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's why my man sold it to you. you know, right. <laughs> like, I know this joint ain't. Yep. And it, it's giving me issues. It has given me and what, issues. And what are the issues? It's an a older machine. So it's the snack machine. So people's money is getting stuck. Um, they're calling all times at night. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Y'all don't call this number. We got to set up a system. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have anyone call me personally. That was the biggest mistake. One of the biggest mistakes that I made when I first got started you are not going to call me. You are going to call this Google voice number, mm-hmm. and but you're not going to reach me directly. People mm-hmm. will call, especially that's a 24 hour location. Mm-hmm. They are not thinking that it's one o'clock in the morning. They're just thinking, I just lost my Gatorade and my money All in right. this machine. I want my money right now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. set up systems for anyone who is listening to this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I get on Facebook Marketplace and I'm like looking for the machine, reach out to the guy. Those machines gross like 1100, sometimes on a good month, 1200 a month. Hmm. Net anywhere from let's say I'm spending like because those machines get heavy traffic, hundred fifty two hundred dollars a month on product. Mm. Oh wow, mm-hmm. those so are my, high profit. Yeah, mm-hmm. high profit. But you want to look for these essential locations. Mm-hmm. The nursing home is not going to get shut down right. in the event that. So the nursing home, the machine has given you issues, but yep. the profit there but is the pro- okay. Yes. All right. And I will work on that machine for the rest of my life if I have to, because the the profits are out of this world. Why so. not just buy another one? Um, I can, I can. Um, I Especially recently if that's paid. Like, that's the cash cow. Like you take care yeah. of the goose is laying the golden yeah. egg. <laughs> Definitely taking care of them. Um, right now, because I'm restructuring the, the business, we're hiring on the back end. It's mm. easier right now to have this machine. We just had a maintenance. We'll be good for the next couple of months right. but in the next couple of months that machine will likely need to be replaced gotcha. but for now while working on the back end we're expanding we're scaling right now it's it's doing what it needs to do got to make the money go yeah. where the money needs to go yes. oh for sure but as we expand <laughs> that machine will absolutely need so to when be replaced. i when i hear vending machines you know visionary over here right mm-hmm. so i have a friend i have a girlfriend who her best friend um i think you know her is it Don Dickinson with yeah, the flat Dawn, outs? Yep. Mm-hmm. So she has vending machines Children. in the airport that nice. have these flat outs. So the flat outs are like for women who are wearing shoes like this or shoes like what you're having on. You're running through the airport, your feet hurt, and you want something that you can wear in public. So they're like the little ballerina shoes that yeah. fold up. So she, she had them outside the club and everything. She like has them outside the club. She's that got them in airports awesome. and they're in vending machines. So now I'm thinking okay, we can, we can put some candy. We can, we can put a couple of candy bars in a location, but what else Mm -hmm. can I put? So like right now you mentioned the pandemic. So I'm thinking masks, right? Hand sanitizer, Mm. those kind of things available in a vending machine. Y'all. You know what? I'm about to ask somebody at the mall if we can do that. You want to do it? Let's get it today. So I I, I don't But you got to mentor us. Of course. Because I have a client who's here in the mall who has a PPE machine. A what? A PPE machine. A PPE machine. Oh, so with all the essentials. We're on yeah. it. Are we still in their stuff? We're yeah. on it. Absolutely. She's here, and I would love Model. to connect with y'all too, because she's <laughs> a beast. She's we don't, like we don't the, need to connect, because we don't want to take too much of right. her idea, right? We're about to <laughs> copy and paste this thing <laughs> right on out. Yeah, wow. she's bomb, though. But yeah, one of my clients. We do want to meet you. For How many does she have? She just, I believe, two here. She's franchising, though. So... I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I know she definitely has one. I, I'm going to butcher the name of the mall because uh-huh. it's not Linux. Linux is like the only mall that I right. actually read. Cumberland, Cumberland, Perimeter. Okay. Um, she might be at Perimeter, but I'm not sure. Okay. I want to double check with, check with her about that. But yeah, so, and I love working with doers. So okay, she's Instagram. absolutely a doer. So it's at GAMS Global Solutions. GAMS? Yep. Spell it. G-A-M-S. Okay, give her some love on the podcast. Yep. GAMS Shout out to Kaya. Global. That's my girl. Yep. Global Solutions. solutions got it um, i love vending machine doers. business i tell people all the time i have a business i have several businesses that that are doing well and making money if you do not launch yours and you need to wait to have your hand held and you need to wait mm-hmm. for me to do everything you're not going to be successful so how did, how did she start did she get like your course or something like that the ebook the ebook the ebook she literally bought the ebook let me see like april i think her Machines were up and on location in July. Oh wow! Yeah, she That's sent me dope. a DM like, "Hey, bought your ebook. <laughs> Let me show you what I did." Mm. I was like, "Oh, you, you're a star." So she so. took your ebook, just the ebook, and 
execute it right away, implement execute. it and execute it right away. So your ebook is that good where it's going to take people who have no knowledge about yep. the industry. I took everything that I knew. I said, okay, I wanted to break this down where a kindergartner can understand it. Mm. Like a five-year-old can mm. literally say, oh, okay, I understand this. And that's what I put into the ebook. I love it. I took it from start to finish. So um, talk us, uh, talk to, first of all, we're for real. When are you leaving town? I leave on Saturday. She leaves on Saturday. Shans, we got to get our vending machine tomorrow. We can get it tomorrow? Where can we get it from? We got to go to Craigslist? Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. Craigslist is not very user friendly, mm -hmm. but I found good deals. Offer up and let go. They've merged. They were two separate You'd apps. never buy a new one. I don't know. Heck no. I had a client send me a, a machine that was $2,500. I was like, what is wrong with you? What? You're spending that what? money because you what? want to. <laughs> but, hey. We'll take cash app. Yeah, if there's a way to like cash app a machine and it takes the bread. Oh, that's yeah. the lick. But we, we I, I want to do some something. IP on this. Yeah, I want to do something like, um, obviously you, you don't veer too far away from the basics because the basics work. Yeah. But I would definitely like to do like a PPE machine. Yeah, that would be crazy. Um, thinking about like what's needed in hospitals other than like other than candy. Mm -hmm. What's needed? Mm -hmm. what, what do those, what do people need when yeah. you're in a hospital, right? Yeah. Um, so catch us up. Mm -hmm. Hold on real quick. Yeah. Do you do cash or card machines or both? Both. So listen. Do people still have cash? They yeah, do. They the do. whole world is on a shortage they of do. coins. Yeah. It's national coin shortage. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing. So I do free lives each month mm -hmm. just because I just like pouring into my community. Mm -hmm. So we have a Facebook group. We'll get into that. Um, so I do free lives for my Facebook group. Literally, it's information I'm sure people charge for, but I don't because mm -hmm. I, ju I just want to give them value. So we did a live in January, and I, I gave them the top six things they need to start a vending machine business in 2021. Mm -hmm. One was essential locations. The other was card readers. Mm -hmm. car, listen, essential I'm not located, turning down. Uh, card reader. Okay. Yep. You have to have card readers. Yeah. I'd never have cash on me. Yeah. Ever. If someone was to say, give me $300 right now, I, where's the ATM? Because mm -hmm. I don't. Your older machine, cash. does that have cat? Does that have a card reader on it? Yep. So oh. my you can do oldest machine. Card machines. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, and attach it to. Mm -hmm. okay, and attach good, it to good, it. Yep. Good. So, and here's the thing about people taxing. So there are vending warehouses in every city. There are vending warehouses here. There's vending warehouses in Detroit. You'll want to Google the closest one to you. These vending warehouses sell product. They offer maintenance services. They mm. will install your card readers. They are a one-stop shop. The vending um, warehouse in my area is extremely high because they're privately owned. So this is the way that I like to, you know, divide this up. So at the vending warehouse, to have them come out and check out my machine, they charge me $250 for maintenance, but they can come like this, Johnny mm -hmm. on the spot. I don't leave any money on the floor. So if, if I have an issue, a location is calling me, we need to get that machine checked out now because we're not, the machine is down two days. I'm right. missed out on two days of money. Sure. I'm not leaving no money on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so they come out right on the spot. The guy who I buy my machines from, he still works a full-time job. Like this is what he does mm -hmm. on the side. He's like, yeah, I can come in a couple of days, but he's going to charge me $40. Mm. Mm. So, so sometimes I have to pay that two fifty. Now, maintenance is not my ministry. Right. A lot of the things that have been wrong with my machines, and I've only had maintenance on that older machine like twice. Um, so it, it's not a lot. It's the like other ones just run. Good like, machines, they just run. Mm, okay. They just run. I love it. Um, but you want to make sure you're doing your due diligence to get good machines. Yeah. So I want to make sure we're not missing any parts of your story because. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, David and I are multiple streams of incomers, mm -hmm. and especially when we can turn one stream into a multiple. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have the vending machine business. Yep. You have an ebook. I have an ebook. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know that you also have courses mm -hmm. in which you help. Um, you're doing these lives. So now we have the vending machine. She's making money from the vending machines. Mm -hmm. She's making money from the books about vending machines. Mm -hmm. She's making money from the courses about vending machines. Mm. She has a couple of premier clients that are one-on-one. -on -one. She's making money about from coaching about vending machines. So right now I'm at four different streams of income. Yep. Talk to me right now about what you're doing in this season to grow your business to the next level. Okay. So um, number one, Donnie is my business coach. <laughs> so that is first and foremost. <laughs> Start there. She's a beast. Um, but so I want to take this back to COVID when my machines got shut down. Mm -hmm. I'm not making any money. So the power of the pivot is so important. Yeah. 
to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be ready to pivot quickly. Yeah. I, I didn't have time to think about it. Also, my dad got hospitalized with COVID. He actually passed away from it in oh, April. Man, um, was hospitalized. So imagine going through that with my family and then and the money. I'm not making any money. So wow. it's like, where do I go with this? But that time absolutely made me. I'll, I'll speak about that season in my life forever because it, mm-hmm. it changed the way that I saw business. Um, it changed me as a woman, as a mm. person, as an entrepreneur. Um, so I believe everything is in divine order. Of course, mm. I wish that would have had a different ending, but it led me here today. Um, so in changing my business, it was very important that I had some some guidance. So Donnie is absolutely that guidance for me because I'm definitely a person that's just like, oh, I can figure this out on my own. It's like, mm. look at how much I've already done on my own. I don't need anybody to tell me anything. But no, I do. Um, so we have the ebook out. I have VIP clients working with Donnie. Where I have a Facebook group where I literally just give value each month. Yeah, we can't skip over that. Your girl did a live. How long were you in this live? 40 minutes. 40 Maybe. minutes and made $17,000. Really? That was last week. <laughs> last week. Yeah. Do tell. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So, and I also want to add this. While you're growing a business, you need systems in place and you need a team. So mm-hmm. I have a starting five. Donnie is a part of my starting five. Donnie's my business coach. I have a project manager that I hire. She's like, you have way too much knowledge. We need to package this and, and give it to your community. Mm-hmm. She's like, you need a Facebook group. I'm like, girl, I haven't logged into my Facebook since like high school. Right. She was like, we got, well, you got, we got to get you up and running. So we get on Facebook. I do a live in September. Um, the live was launching your vending business mm-hmm. with less than $1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, giving value for an hour. I wasn't even looking to get paid for anything. I'm like, I just want to share this info. It has changed my life. If you do it right, it'll change yours too. Um, Hold on. So I have there. the book? <laughs> you have Always Make Your Bed. So that's the book about um, my life in news and, and making the Forbes list and, and what I learned from there. Okay. I, so, I was, I was saying like, like hold up. Let me, but I got you. I'll send you the ebook the though, book? for sure. Oh, I got okay. you. So, okay. So I don't know. Do we say it, on, it wasn't on camera, right? Where like, I, I think one day I'll, I'll pick like a subset of people like, yo, yeah. black women authors. I want to buy your book right now. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, somebody that's in a t-shirt business or something like that. I'll buy your shirt right now. Mm-hmm. And I guess I bought your book yep. somehow. And, um, I won't say I bought the wrong book because I want to buy. I want the one about the vending machine. Right, 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 for yeah. sure, for sure. But tell us about the first book. So the first book is called "Always Make Your Bed: okay. Seven Principles to Dream It, Do It, and Get What You Want Out of Life." Um, oh, I did buy the right book. Yeah, I need that. It's me on the cover. It's tan and, and turquoise. That's my little color scheme. Okay. Uh, so I wrote it because I, I'm starting to do speaking engagements. Once I make the Forbes list, so many young women were coming up to me like, "I want you to be my mentor." I'm like, "I do not have the bandwidth or the capacity mm. to work with all of these young women." I'm a very hands-on mentor. I have one mentee that I, has been my mentee since 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, she also understands the fundamentals of mentorship. It's a give and take relationship. Yeah. Like you have to give. For me to right. give to you. For it sure. is not a one-ended relationship. And she gets it. So I don't know when I'll take on other mentees. But I reached out to so many people, especially when I was down But here. you did commit to take us on, though, right? Oh, we're in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking y'all, for we're sure. We're in right. there. It's a little yeah. hard Shame for me when to... when that foot starts shaking. Ching, 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 ching. It's, ching, it's ching. a little hard for me to decipher the doers. Because mm-hmm. I've worked with so many people and got my time wasted. And mm-hmm. my time is just too valuable now. Mm-hmm. I just do not have the time to just work with you and, and you don't know what you want to yeah. do. I have to work with the people that, that's why my course, my vending course is called launch your business in 30 days. Cause I did it in 27. So yeah. why are we wasting time? Yeah. If, if anything, if I learned anything this past year with my dad, my dad was healthy. He goes into the hospital and he passes 30 days later. So time is of the essence. Oh. We don't know what's going to happen. So why are you sitting on these ideas? If God is, if God put something in your spirit, go after it. So can I ask you though, mm-hmm. going through that, that's tough. It is. That's tough. It is. Um, I'm going to try not to cry through my makeup. In terms of maintaining focus on a business, mm-hmm. like how is that, how, how, how do you do that? You know what I mean? Because I mean, some people mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. kind of want to ball up and just, I, I'm, I'm done right now. I just need time. I'm, forget all this business stuff. Yeah. Walk me through that season. So my dad passed April 25th. I didn't get back to work, like actually working. I took two weeks off from VIP clients. Um, from taking consultations and therapy. Changed the game. My mom, my sister, and I were in grief counseling for seven months. Mm. Changed the game. Um, We started in grief counseling for, of course, you know, the sudden loss of my dad. And other things started to come up. Like, Mm. oh, I'm very passive in my business. I need to start speaking up. My dad was my unofficial partner in my vending business. 
So he was the manly man. Like we show up to a location, something isn't right. He's like, oh, this needs to be done. He's staying on me. We need to do this. Mm-hmm. I did not have that anymore. My mm-hmm. first location moving in without him, I felt so weak. Wow. I'm like, wow. I'm here. I don't have anybody advocating for me. So I needed to advocate for myself. Mm-hmm. So therapy turned me into a beast. Wow. So anyone who, and of course we started in grief counseling, anyone who is at a crossroads or just feels like I need someone to talk to or therapy, therapy. Mm-hmm. Almost every episode I talk about how I need a therapist, but yeah. I never find I one by the next episode. One. I didn't get one. Didn't someone refer therapy. you to their therapist? No, they didn't. I okay. think somebody said they were going to, but yeah, I think I need some therapy. Yeah. It so, helps. It's some stuff. Yeah. It's I, in all of us. Like, it's some stuff going on that, like, I think somebody needs to break up that us. ground. Yep. Yeah. There's stuff in all of us that, that's worth talking to somebody about, but somebody that can help you. Yes. Yeah. Judgment free yep. zone. Because I'm not the one for you. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. All day. <laughs> even I, I see some of the, like, posts you make, Donnie, I'm like, yo, she definitely needs therapy. Like, something's. <laughs> Something's drastically wrong with this woman. So no, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do it together. Okay, yeah, um, so right so so therapy. Yep. Um, but like, what made you get just jump back in and? Um, I took time. So I took two weeks off of VIP clients. Um, but two weeks with time. Two weeks, just two weeks. Um, but from doing anything else in my business, my machines were shut down, so I wasn't dealing gotcha. with clients. I wasn't dealing with any of that. The ebook was kind of selling on its own, but I was not even active on social media for like a month. So mm. I like kind of disappeared because I had to gather myself. Yeah, good. Um, so I took that time. And that time, y'all, was imperative because mm. my therapist literally to this day, because we're actually business partners now. I got to tell y'all my next venture. Okay. Um, we're business partners. She and I ended up getting cool. She was like, I want you to give yourself time. I was like, but I took a month and I took a very intentional month yeah. where I was doing the work. So I took that month and I was ready to jump in. The work first. in terms of? Internal work. work. Yep. Mm-hmm. Healing. Yep. Um, she gave us, I had homework each week. My mom, my sister, and I, because we did group therapy together. We had homework. So some of the homework sessions were to talk to yourself in the mirror. So I was in the mirror talking to myself for like 10, 15 minutes a day. That it's hard if you've never done that before. Dang, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. You, and look at yourself in the mirror. And, and it was hard. But I'm doing it. And it turned me into a, I don't want to say a different person. It just magnified what I already had inside of me. Mm-hmm. But I did the work. I did the work. I had to write a letter to my dad. Wow. Wrote him a letter. We took it to the Detroit River and we released the letters. And we released roses with it. And it's wow. just doing the work. I released so much. Yeah. During that time. And I took that month. I took two weeks with the right. VIP clients. They was on my head. They were like, Yeah, right, right. we know your dad just passed, but I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just vending machine business. Yeah. Um, so and that's a whole nother story with working with clients. But I pushed myself to do that, but everything else, I took a month off. I did not do anything. In my planner, I'm a chronic planner. I talk about this all the time on my Instagram. In my planner, and I'll show it to y'all because I actually have it with me. I wrote, I have work to do, but I'm not doing it because I'm taking time to heal. Mm. And that was it for four mm. weeks straight. I love it. I love it. Wow. Yeah. I think somebody needed to hear that. that I think somebody needed to hear that. That was deep. Um, real quick, mm-hmm. I don't think we touched on the 17,000 in 40 minutes. Yeah. It, oh, it I was more that. than that in September when I launched. Yeah. Like 35,000. How you do 35,000? <laughs> okay. Well, what did, what did we do? What did we do? What did you do? So, again, going back to the starting lineup, like Donnie, you said, what, is it, what does it take to grow your business in this season? You mm-hmm. need help. You need a mm-hmm. team. You can only go so far alone. Mm-hmm. And I definitely had that mindset. Like, it's just me. I've grown other businesses by myself. Not to get to the million dollar mark. You need a team. You need systems. Mm-hmm. You need processes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Donnie is a part of my starting five. Mm-hmm. Um, so, she's my business coach. But I have a project manager also. So, literally, her genius area is packaging info and then putting it out. She's like, yeah, I'm going to create you a Facebook group. What I did was I showed up. The night of the mm-hmm. live, she said, what do you want to talk about? I said, starting a vending machine business with less than $1,000. Um, I am, I'm not even frugal, y'all. I'm cheap. Mm-hmm. I'm just a cheap person. Right. So I like doing everything on a budget. Like, I don't care how much money I have. I'm always going to be this way. Mm-hmm. So I've mm-hmm. accepted that. Um, but I like to offer that to my audience also because this can absolutely be done. Very low start, startup costs. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I want to tell people how to do it with less than $1,000 because maybe I spent $1,300 to get my first machines into a location she's like bet we doing a a live on how to start your business with Mm. less than a thousand dollars we do that um we bring people into the group i'm like okay i need your email address so then i'm also simultaneous simultaneously building my email Mm -hmm. list so i got my email list to like 3600 in Mm -hmm. four months maybe three four months 
um, I'm like, I need your email list. Come join my Facebook group. I'm doing this live. And I, like I said, believe in giving value. So I just go all the way in in Facebook Live. I go through how much car readers cost, how much movers should cost, mm. telling them all the mistakes that I made so they don't make it. Mm. Offer my course at the end. I'm like, okay, I have how a course. How much is the course? The course is now, well, it's originally 277 I offered yeah. it to them for $99. Mm. I'm like, for the next, until midnight, y'all can get it for $99. Mm. 360 people bought it mm. in maybe a couple hours. In like five days, I think four days, three or four days, we did like thirty five thousand off the course. So oh wow! In September, so that's amazing. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Isn't that dope? I love the Thank success you. that you're experiencing. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've learned a lot of hard lessons to get yeah. to that point. So I always like to say that to people because they see it like, oh, you're in a Forbes list, you do this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I mm. paid the cost. Yeah, I paid the cost to get here. So anyone that you see on social media. They paid a price. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It doesn't yeah. come easy. So you're, you're absolutely killing it. Flat out killing it. Thank you. How are we doing in the relationship department? Yikes. Is there a little... Um, yikes. Dun, 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 is dun, there dun, a dun, D-boy dun, dun, up dun. here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, there, my love life is non-existent. Really? Why yeah. does this happen it's so much? I love mm-hmm. hustlers. Like, that's also part of my problem. Like, I love hustler, hustlers. Hustler, like, in terms of going to get it, or a hustler, dun, like, dun, dun, yo, or make, take dun, this little pack, take this to <laughs> take I need this you to, to get on the wall, like, kind of hustler. <laughs> no, but, um... You just have to have yeah, that. You're from the that, D. She like that a little she bit. She from the D. Look, <laughs> pack is, I, mean, you I want ghosts. Right. Listen, I'm a product of my environment. You know what I'm saying? If so you like a little older, you like ghosts. I like ghosts. You like ghosts. Tommy could have got it. I Tommy for sure could have. I like Tommy Kane. Have y'all been watching the new show? Yes. Oh, Kane is fine. I like Kane. Kane is fine. Kane is my type. Yeah, um, Kane is fine, <laughs> but, but it's non-existent. I, I like hustlers, but I don't like shooters. I don't yeah. like hustlers. <laughs> yeah, don't don't get me involved in what you got going on. I, first of all, just for the record, no no drug dealers. That's not what I mean yeah, by no, a hustler. No, yeah. but I do like yeah. a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all I mean, know, you know. Don't, don't approach me if, if that's what you're doing. If you're if you're a dope boy, no. I like I like hustlers though. I like um men who know how to get to it, period. Yeah. And they like, you know what I mean? No, we <laughs> they, don't. What you do you don't mean? play what with is, them. What does that mean? I, I like guys that you don't play games with. Yeah. And who don't period. play about me. And who don't play about me. But I don't like shooters. We not out. We not pulling. You know what I mean. I don't. I don't need you to have that kind of record on your on your situation. Yeah. Mm. I like you know just guys who are who are in posture. They're bosses. They command respect. Like you know not to play with them. They're a type personalities. The true definition of an alpha man. Um, and they're not really triable like that to the blind yeah. eye. Even right. I like that. <laughs> I don't like the little bros. It's like. That's I how I kind of. I don't, you know, back that. in the day when I was in the club, like mm-hmm. I don't like the. Now I've never liked the guy who's doing all the sitting and standing on the sofas and bottles pouring. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that guy either, but I certainly didn't like the guy whose job it was to go get the bottle. <laughs> what the guy? If you can be little bro, I don't want you. Yeah. Who put in less? Little bro. To go, like yeah, you just go get the he, bottle. You just go get the bottle and bring it back. Come back with some girls. I didn't like that that guy either. It's really weird because I like businessmen. I like businessmen, but I like businessmen who have a history of um, <laughs> who have a history right of being now? a little rough around the edges. Right, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad yeah, at I mean, that. and I'm not, I'm not talking about like drugs and fighting and stuff. Yeah. I'm talking about like environment. Yeah, like stop, because you, yeah, I, I'm reading you right now. They okay. yell like dope boys <laughs> all day long. If you don't Jeez, come with listen. the bricks, no, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> Trap yeah. queen. She's building this show. brick by brick. <laughs> right, right. Because for, for some sure. reason, she was in the little uh, radio station van throwing up gang signs. Like, I was trying. Gang, we gang. Get that. <laughs> My we favorite movie is we'll Paid in Full. So whenever I meet a man, they're like, what's your favorite movie? I'm like, I love the game. I love the hustle. So you like I resonating with Tasha. Like you love mm. Tasha's character on Ghost. Yeah, on and I reel them in. They're like, oh, Or so, Mary. So who can slide in the DM right now? What's the perfect DM slide? And what, how do you the do it? The perfect is because I'm DM taking sliding. you somewhere, and that's not bad. It's not bad. You know what? Okay. Because you told me somebody was coming in. Tra- I think we were Don't talking. Don't mention that on this episode. What you mean? Don't say a name. I'm not going to say a name, but we were talking to somebody. 
<laughs> I guess I can't say. You cannot. We were, okay, we were talking to somebody. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> for one, he was shooting a shot at Dottie. But, but <laughs> Dottie's like, ah. And then, she, then she's like, yo, you know what? I got somebody for you or something like that. And oh, no, no, she was no, no, like, no. no, I'm taking you to somewhere else. Yeah. So no, I he didn't did say, say that. Who. Oh, okay. Right. So there's this guy who was definitely shooting a shot, but not for real. He's my guy. I mean, yeah, I'm he, kind of fool. Yeah. And he's my guy too. Yeah. Just, you know, he's my guy. But so I, to I, tread thi- yeah. I tread lightly. So we're there and I'm like, well, maybe not me, but I got somebody that you like. <laughs> but like. then she said she's taking you because so, I'm putting this together. Yeah. You, you're connected. And so then I said, well, else. wait, let me let me just see because I kind of have her in mind to like introduce her to somebody else. Do I know the person you're going to introduce her to? I'm not telling you who I'm no, introducing you to. No, 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 not who, to. but do I know can the I, person? Can I answer that? Yeah. You absolutely know this person. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, I can't wait to cut these cameras off because I got to go anyway. I want the gospel. You absolutely know this person. Okay, did y'all get value? Good? Okay, great. All right, so um, yeah, but we're going in the vending machine business. Yes. Uh, do we need yeah, sure. you to be? Do we actually need to do this tomorrow? Like, do you need to be here, or can we like phone this thing out? Y'all are doers, so I have like full trust in you both that you can get this done in less than thirty days. Okay. So it's not rocket science, y'all. Like, okay. it is not rocket science. Um, it can definitely be done. We can get on a Zoom. We can like, I'll give y'all my phone Let's number. Donna, you have call. my number. If Absolutely. y'all need anything, you can call me. Gotcha. But yeah. okay, okay, I'm with it. I'm with it. servicing. Is that is that tough? Is it? No, it's not. So actually servicing. So my mom helps me now. She took my dad's spot. Mm -hmm. So let me backtrack. After this, before I took my month, and that's why it's so important to kind of take sabbaticals. If you need to take time off social media, you need to take time to get yourself right. You have to do it. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Because my first time going back to service a location that he had been with me, I I cried in the parking lot. Mm. I was calling his phone knowing I wasn't going to get an answer. But I was just calling the phone. Like, I just want a piece of my dad with me. So my mom was like, forget that. I'm taking his place. He wouldn't want you to not do this. For sure. So, boom, we back at it. Tag wow. team. Um, so, with servicing now with my mom, we can service, because uh, I timed us the last time we did it. It took us 20 minutes mm. to service a snack and beverage machine. So, that was it. We took $100 out of the machine. So, so and that's like one of our <clears throat> lowest grossing machines. Gotcha. So. One more question before uh-huh. we go. Yes. I had a cough. My water went down the wrong way. You I'm got COVID, to- <laughs> golly. <laughs> that girl got that thing. I just didn't okay. want to alarm you guys, but my water went <laughs> she down. She was trying to hold I'm it in until she explained Yo. herself. <laughs> I was wondering why you started red over there. <laughs> hold on. I got a cough. Last question. Okay, right? no problem. When you put a machine in a <laughs> space, mm-hmm. Typically, this, the venue, they want either rent or a percentage mm-hmm. of something, right? How do you mm-hmm. negotiate those deals? I do not believe in paying rent or commission to any location. And mm. I'm very upfront about that because I'm doing all of the hard work. You're reaping the benefits of it's me putting my... It's to your It's business. convenient to you. So literally all of my locations, we're in... We have eight machines. We're like going on our fifth location. Um, all of my locations <laughs> except for the gym. Because they're just like, yeah, no, we got all these clients. You're yeah. going to give us a cut. Sure. I don't pay uh, rent or commission to any of them except the gym. What's that split? A 25%. They get 25%. They get 25% profit of, of sales. Of profit. Profit. Yep. Okay, so you take out your cost and then yep. profit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do they yep. just trust you or do they want to see the books? Or? <sighs> yep, so they trust me. I told them. So it's hard with cash machines. With a card reader, they send you a trend report each month. They direct deposit your funds. You can show exactly how much we're making. Gotcha. With cash, it's a little different. Yeah. So I always tell them I only believe in operating in integrity. I'm never going to lie to you. If you do not trust me, this is not going to be a good partnership because I cannot have someone micromanaging me. Anyone listening right now, don't have someone micromanaging you. Um, but I just tell them, like, I write everything down. I'm very old school. I don't do Excel sheets. I yeah. literally have a Microsoft word thing that I printed out that I write everything on. Mm. So I track my product, I track my income, and I show them that. They yeah. trust me, so they like, girl, we know you're not going to play yeah, us out of our sure. money. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I would. I always tell my clients, 10 and 25%, but don't go over 25%. Got I was. I love the gym. I love working with them. We kind of had a relationship prior to me working with them, but I was prepared to walk away if they wanted more than 25%. Mm. Mm, gotcha. And I say what's dope is like you get the vending machine and you're not like locked into one product because you can – Customize what products are going into yeah. that particular machine. Okay, cool. All right, look, we gotta we gotta um, give a quick commercial real okay. quick. I want you to think of something deep and profound to say to close this out. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. cool. Um, this episode is sponsored as always by the Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com. Themorningmeetup.com is the only community that gathers every single morning, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, for the betterment of the entrepreneurial community. Did you know we had the Morning Meetup? So, like, I kind of knew about it. 
It's but amazing. I didn't really know about the morning. So yet. hundreds of entrepreneurs gather every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard okay. Time. And we have a different topic. So every month we have a theme okay. and every day of the week supports the theme. So this month we're doing um, Is it millionaires? Millionaire mindset. Got it. So literally we'll probably have about 13 millionaires that I'm just interviewing so we can identify how they think, so we can adopt the millionaire mindset. And we're reading um, Richest Man in Babylon together. So chapter by chapter, and we talk about it before the call gets going, and it's just a phenomenal connection. Community. I love it. And I'm going to do something special for them. You can join for one dollar, just one dollar for seven days. Try us out. If you like us, stay. If not, you can leave. There's no contracts, no obligations. Just go to themorningmeetup.com and enroll. Okay. Um, if you like to stay after the trial period, it's seventy nine dollars a month, but it's more than worth it. Price of a cup of coffee every single day. Um, you can have access to the most amazing network of entrepreneurs from all across the country. I guarantee, if you're in the United States, there's somebody on the call that's in your city. Guaranteed. So go to themorningmeetup.com, 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 and enroll right now for a dollar. Okay, Donnie Wiggins. This episode is also brought to you by Donnie Wiggins and Post to Paid. Uh, Post to Paid is the only community in which you can get directly to your te- cell phone from me. Uh, three text messages every single day that give you a prompt of a story that you can use on your social media to sell. So I send you post post prompts, post prompts uh, that sell, that make a lot of money. Danny, are you using post to pay? Yes. So I do want to tell you this. Um, in the <laughs> first week of January, <laughs> my vending that. page had 3,777 followers. We currently have like 5,300. Mm. That was the first week of January. Mm-hmm. Mm. We are in the third week of January. So post to pay works. That is post-to-pay a result of works. post to pay. So seriously, it. you guys, post to pay is designed to help you engage on social media, tell stories to your audience that works. So if you're in business, you want to connect with us. It's just $37 a month. That's $1.23 a day. It. You can mm-hmm. get in by texting me the words post to paid. Again, that is 404-737-2767. One more time, just because we were confused. (laughs) 404-737-2767. There you go. Good, good. Danny, thank you so much. Thank I know you. that D stands for D boy. So all the D boys. Danny D boy. <laughs> Danny D boy. Listen, as as her business coach, we cannot allow uh, any D boys to come in. Uh, you gotta take yeah. a selfie. And to currently, trap I'm right not yo. taking anyone who has kids. Oh. I don't have any oh. kids. I've dated someone with kids. It's just that's not my jam. Until okay, you so. find that one dude with kids that you just fall in love with. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right don't now. don't yeah. ignore what she just talking about. Okay, because it shoot doesn't. your shot, Listen, kid, the kid situation. Let me just put you on to. It depends on the situation. Yeah, right. If they're out of state, that's great. Even if they're local, they got time. They have great relationships with the children's mom. But yeah, mm-hmm. there are a lot of different factors. A lot of different factors. Yeah. But I get it. You want what you want. It is. If what you it have is. a newborn. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a mom. And I'm not taking guys with babies. <laughs> yeah, that's so, cool, guys with babies. so you are, you are a young, fly, you successful businesswoman. You outside. I'm outside. <laughs> she outside. She listen, I'm in the streets. Okay? We're in the streets. <laughs> Summertime is upon us. But uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming by. Uh, let people know how to find you. And um, I need you to close this out with a strong word of wisdom. Okay. So I am at Danielle D. Hughes everywhere. I make it easy for everyone at Danielle D. Hughes. Instagram, Facebook. I do not have a Twitter. I've been told I need to get on Twitter. Mm. Um, But my vending page, where to find us, we are at Elite Global University. So that is us on Facebook. That is us on Instagram. Our, um, you, well, if you go to our Instagram, you can join our free Facebook group. I do lives every month. You just go to at Elite Global University on Instagram, click on the link in our bio, and it'll take you straight there. So Oh, there it is. That's where I'm at. Close us out strong. There's somebody watching that mm-hmm. just needs a change. They need encouragement to go through something. So shameless plug really quickly. So we know that I have a book called Always Make Your Bed. That's what I'm going to leave everyone with today. Um, I never had a lot of structure growing up. So when I moved to Georgia State, I was sick of my BS. And I said, I know that I have what it takes to become successful. I have to put myself in that environment. So I have to create that for myself. So I started Mm -hmm. making my bed every morning. I've never done anything consistently. Prior to that, I was 21. Mm. I started making my bed that consistently 
that consistency bled into other areas of my life. So now I'm maximizing my time. I'm getting more done in a day. And I was proud of myself because I was like, oh, I made my bed. I made my bed. I did that consistently. Mm. What else can I do consistently? Mm. And it truly led me to where I am today. Wow. So if you have trouble with consistency, you're a procrastinator. Find one thing that you can do each day and stay consistent in that for 30 days. Mm. 30 days is like my thing. Um, but just stay consistent doing that one thing. I promise you, I guarantee you, I bet all of my money on it. You will see results and it'll bleed into other areas of your life. Dope, I love it. Dope. Can't I close it out it. no stronger than that. Listen, man, do me a favor. Go get some social proof. Okay. Go do something successfully. Go build something big and uh, study how you did it because I want you to come back and teach other people how you did it. So go to the bank. And if they do it, do it. Y'all might be next, right here in the middle seat. Right here. On the Social Proof Podcast. We'll get some podcast. receipts. We are out of here. <laughs> Peace. Bye.